In this session, we're going to take a look at using the SVN import command to load files directly into a repository without the need for a working copy. Change your working directory to the samples directory in the pack provided with the training course. We're interested in the contents of the MO3L11 directory. In this session, we're going to place the imported.txt into the MO3L11 repository. It's important to note that the MO3L11 directory is not a working copy. This is illustrated on the right by the green field showing that this is just a straightforward directory structure. We're going to use the import command. In this example, we have svn import followed by a message. The import command expects a log message, just as the commit command does. The reason being that the import command will always affect the repository, and anything which affects the repository will request a log message. In this case, we're using a simple string message supplied by the minus "-m", option. The next command to the import command is the path to be imported. In this case, we're importing a single file. So we specify the path mo3l11 imported.txt, which indicates the file in our directory structure that we wish to import. Finally, we need a target, and this is specified using a URL. The URL points to the location within the repository that we want this file to be placed. In this case, we're specifying the full path. SVN localhost mo3.11 specifies the repository, and then trunk imported.txt tells the subversion client the path within this repository that we want the file to be placed. Executing the import command shows that it behaves much the same way as doing an addition using a working copy. However, we've circumvented the need to check out a working copy by using the import command. The import command reports that it is adding the imported.txt file and shows us that it has committed this as revision 2. Looking at the demonstration area to the right, you can see that the blue repository has been updated with the imported.txt file and that the samples file system remains completely untouched. Showing the latest revision of the trunk directory within the repository shows revision 2 and the addition of the imported.txt file. Notice that this addition is indistinguishable from an SVN add and commit operation confirming once again that as far as subversion is concerned, an import is essentially an add command. It's important to note that when importing individual files, a complete path must be specified to tell the subversion client where in the repository the file is to be placed. It might be tempting to attempt the following. Performing the import specifying the source as the imported.txt file and the target as the directory into which it is to be written. In this example, the sumder within trunk already exists, so we might reasonably expect that the import command, as specified, would create an imported.txt file within the sumdir. However, this is not what happens. The imported command simply tells us that the target we're attempting to create already exists. This is an important point. If the sumdir had not existed within our repository and we run the same command, the result would have been that the imported.txt file would have been imported into the repository as a file named sumdir. And this would have probably not been what we wanted. So to summarize, when using the import command to add individual files into a repository, it is important that the import command specifies the full path and file name that is to be the target within the repository. Failing to do so may have unintended consequences.